So you've got this great flow that you made to return a SQL query back into your Power Apps. Well, what if you wanted to return a different array? What can you do then? Turns out you could just replace the steps in between. Instead of executing a SQL query, I can just execute getting rows, or I can execute a SQL stored procedure in the middle. I'll delete whatever I have in the middle. Uh, I'll get rid of this variable. If I wanted to run uh, a SQL stored procedure, I could search for it here. I'll select execute a stored procedure. I'll select my procedure. I'll run the test. I'll save and then run the test. Run the flow. What I'm doing here is getting some sample data. So I could feed it into the response and figure out what kind of columns and data types am I going to be expecting? It's finished. I go into the outputs. All right. It's a ton of data here. What I want to do is find where table is. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to copy just a few records. I'm looking for the end of curly, curly bracket. I go back into flow, and I'm going to edit my flow, go into the response, give it some sample payload. I started with a, uh, the square bracket, and each of the records in between was curly bracket to curly bracket. So I need to finish off with a square bracket just to close it off. Giving it that sample data, it's going to estimate what kind of data types am I expecting here? String, Boolean, number. I'm scrolling through to make sure. Okay, balance didn't come out because it received too many null values. So I'll copy from another uh, one and I'm gonna make it a number. Okay, and let's see what else is missing. Okay, it looks like everything else went through. So all that's left, all right, all that's left is to uh, give it a body. I'm going to go back into that sample data. I'm going to check, okay, how is the body returning? Here's the body. It's returning output parameters and result sets, just like the other one did. So when I use body, I'm going to skip output parameters. I want, it, I want to reference result sets. And then inside result sets, I want to reference table one. Going back to my flow, type in an expression. Oh, it already gave me the dynamic content, so I can Select result sets table one. Um, if it didn't, you could use the expression that's in uh, the previous blog. All right, I'll save it. I'll test it, and it should give me the data in the last set. I'll run the flow. Let's see if, let's see how it turned out. Now my stored procedure is returning a lot more records, um, but as long as there's the data, this means that it successfully uh, completed that stored procedure. Okay. Let's try another one. Instead of SQL stored procedure, uh, Looks like it won't let me delete it. Okay. Let's add, okay, let's do a search for SQL. We'll select SQL Server. 
and this time we want the get rows. The difference between get rows and some of the other SQL uh, SQL actions is this one uses O data filter queries. Okay, aggregation is do you want a sum from the results that you come out with or any other aggregate functions, uh, average, and so on. Filter is one that we're going to be looking at. Uh, let's continue. Order by means which, uh, which of the columns do you want to order by? Skip count uh, skips entries every so often. Uh, that you specify here. Top count is how many records do you want to return? Select query is not, it's not your, what you think of when you think of a select action for SQL. This just means which, which fields do you want to get back? It's like the select action in flow. Okay, filter is the one we're concerned about. You can think of it as in a SQL query, you would use something like select everything from this table where blank. So it'd be like a where uh, statement. I want to filter the query where the number equals 4001. Okay, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna, I'm going to clear out this response step. Then I could delete this stored procedure. And let me erase the response. We'll give it whatever we get from get rows. I run the test. Oh, my mistake. I forgot. I just told you that SQL, you, uh, the the get rows function uses a an O data query. So instead of the equal sign, you use eq to mean equals. Okay, that's why I got that bad gateway. I save it. I test it. And I'm going to get the data from it so that I can build my schema. First thing uh, I'm going to describe here is you'll see uh, the bits of information are different. I don't see results sets and operation uh, body anymore. Um, I see this different set of information. So I'll copy the square bracket to the square bracket. I edit my flow. And I'm going to use that sample payload to generate a skeleton of what kind of data to expect paste it in and it'll create it for me. Now in body, we want the value uh, for the dynamic content. Okay. Okay, I'll save. I will test that. And it should work out. Oh, success. I see a green check mark. Let's see what it came out with. Okay, so it returned starting from that uh, square bracket returned all the data I was expecting. So the big idea here is 
whatever you want to return, generate its skeleton, and it'll be able to return it. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.